Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can achieve this beautiful rich red color using avocado skins. And you can see here, it's really, really quite beautiful and deep. A lot of people have requested this video and they've told me that they can only produce a really pale pink color. And this is actually, believe it or not, also avocado dyed. And you can see the difference here, right? This is two different batches. For this one here, I added a little something extra in the mixture to deepen that color. And I discussed this in the video. And then also we're doing some little experiments. Here we go. You can see a little bit of blue here and there. And I'm going to show you how I achieved that with the party streamers. And it's a whole lot of fun and it can produce such beautiful results. And then of course we can use that solution to do other things like I used it on these crochet doilies and some fabrics and all sorts of things, right? We'll discuss everything. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first tip is to use black skinned avocados rather than the green skinned avocados. These have a lot more pigment to them and you will get a lot more pink out of the black skinned ones. Having said that, I use what I have and I'm going to use these green ones today mixed in with some black ones. Why not? All right, so I have a bit of a mixture here. I have my green skins and black skins and this used to be a green skin as well. It's gone very dark because I don't actually freeze my skins, which is another thing you can do. You can store the skins in the freezer until you're ready to make the dye bath. I actually just leave them on the side and they dry up like this. You can see this one's really dry. They can be sitting there for months and I've had no problem. And uh, when it comes to cleaning them, I don't even spend too much time cleaning them. You can see this one here has a little bit of avocado here. You will see all of these little impurities are gonna bubble up to the surface of the dye and then we remove it. So, but don't leave huge chunks of avocado, otherwise, you know, it's gonna go moldy when you're storing your skins. Okay, and I'm also keeping the pits. We need these as well, because they also add to the color. In terms of how many skins and avocados you need, I have eight here, you know, eight full avocados here. But in terms of how many you need for yourself is really determined by the size of your pot, right? So if I'm using a smaller pot, obviously I would be using less avocado. So using a larger pot is going to produce more solution. Using a smaller pot will produce less solution, right? All right, so now what I want to do is cover these avocados with water. And I'm just going to, you'll be able to see better in, in a moment. I'm just going to cover the avocados. I'm not going to go any extra. So just covering it with tepid water or, you know, warm-ish water. Okay, so hopefully you can see a little bit better now. I've just covered the avocado, as you can see when I push down, it's just covered with the water. And now I'm going to bring this to boil. If you want nice, soft pink hues, this is what you do. If you want a deep, rich pink color or deep, rich red color, then at this point you add a little bit of bicarb soda or soda bicarbonate. Here we go, so maybe I'll just put about a teaspoon. So what happens is this shifts the alkalinity of the solution and really draws out that pink color. You can play around with lime solution as well, or a little bit of lime, or if you want some orangey hues drawn out, then you put a little bit of vinegar. So that's something that you can experiment with. I haven't tried the vinegar yet, but this gives me a really, really dark red color. All right, so now what is going to happen now is I'm going to wait for this to boil. And then once this boils, we are going to let it simmer for about one hour. An important thing to remember here is not to let this solution boil for too long because it's not the heat, it's the length of time that produces those rich hues, right? So we wanna bring it to the boil quickly and then lower the temperature and let it simmer. Generally, it's for an hour. All right, here we go. That's now starting to boil. And I might add a tiny little bit more bicarb soda. Maybe it's best to wait for it to boil and then add the bicarb soda. I don't know, experiment. That's what I do. You can see it's already starting to extract some color. Beautiful. Ideally, we want that rich red color. So let's see how that goes. So now it's boiling like crazy. I'm going to turn down the heat. Here we go. Maybe I'll check it in half an hour. We'll have a look how this water looks in half an hour. 
and then we'll see how we go from there. All right, so it's been exactly half an hour and I want to show you how deep that color is. Look at that, very deep, rich color. So I could probably stop here, but I'm going to leave it for another half an hour and then we shall continue with the process. Okay, so it's been one hour exactly and I think that is it. I'm going to get this off. You can see very, very rich color here. Turning the heat off. All right, so now I'm going to strain this liquid through a sieve and I'm going to pop a little bit of cheesecloth that I'm reusing from last time as well in there to get as much of those impurities as possible. Actually, I might put a layer of this as well, doubled up. Here we go. I don't know if I'm going overboard, but just to be on the safe side. And now I'm going to strain that liquid into the pan where I'm going to lay my papers. I'm going to compost these avocado skins. I'm not sure if you can actually reuse them. I haven't tried that yet, but that's another experiment to do. And now to strain the remaining liquid. I'm going to start putting my paper in while the solution is still hot. Let's see what happens when I just do this. Look at this, very, very dark. So I, of course, I like to leave them in there for a little while. And by the way, I'm just using copy paper, 80 GSM, nothing special. And I'm going to put all sorts of things in there. I'm going to put in some of these lined papers, some of the map papers. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. And it does stain your hand and plus it's very hot at the moment. So just be careful. Last time I did this, I had red fingers. So I'm just popping in papers one by one. Sometimes I'm not even going to cover the whole thing. It's nice to have some white patches as well. You know, I just play around with that kind of thing. Some random smaller pieces of paper. You can pop in envelopes, you can dye fabric, all sorts of fun things. I'm going to put in this yellow cardstock to see what happens. Maybe some white cardstock, doilies, you know, all sorts of stuff. Some of these graph papers. And I'm just going to keep going with this until I can fit in as many papers as I possibly can in here. And if you've seen my onion skin dyeing process and my tea and coffee dyeing process, you will know that oftentimes I leave these papers in the solution overnight. So I'm going to do one batch now and then when I take these papers out, I will have some more solution left. Sometimes this process will take me three days because I want to use up all of the solution. Another thing you can do is freeze any leftover solution. It's not going to keep in the fridge for very long. It will only last about three days before it goes bad. So you can freeze it, but I would suggest that you heat it right back up to almost boiling point again before you start popping in the papers. All right, so I'm adding the last sheet of paper because I can't really fit any more in there. And you can see if I was to take it out now, it's already pinkish, but not nearly as pink as I want it to be or red. I will come back in about one hour and we'll see how that's looking in an hour. Okay, so it's only been about 15 minutes and you can already see how that color is changing and it's becoming much darker. But while I'm waiting for this to be ready, I just want to show you another fun thing that you can do. So if you want to create fun effects like this, this is from my previous session where there's a graduation of these different colors. This is how I have achieved this result. I personally use party streamers. You can use watered down acrylic paint. I haven't tried that. I think the, uh, the one that I've just shown you, I've used green. But for this one today, I just want to see what happens. I'm going to use some blue party streamers, pop it in this glass and add some boiling water. And you can see I'm getting this blue water, but some party streamers are better than others. Some don't have a lot of color. So I'm going to add a bit of green. Why not? see what happens yeah see how that green I don't even know if you can tell but that green has added more color maybe I put a bit of this one too I've had these party streamers for years in fact I do have an old video where I use party streamers to dye paper I'm gonna link it, link it down below but many years ago I purchased a box at, a, at a, like a garage sale of party streamers I'm not sure why I thought I needed them but they're coming in handy. Look at that color. Nice. So 
at the next step I am going to show you what I do with this but now I've got it ready so okay so it has been about an hour that this was in here in total and you can see it's quite red so the longer I leave it the red I will be but I have to get on with things so I'm gonna start taking these out and laying them out to dry and then I'll show you how that looks okay so this is how I dry my papers I like to lay them out one by one I also like to have some liquid pooling so I don't actually drain the papers completely because that's going to look really nice when it's dry. I have a lot of papers left in the solution so what will happen now is once these papers are dry I get them off and then I just keep going with the papers that are left in the solution so I just keep repeating that process until everything is done and now I want to show you what I do with this. And I just wanted to mention in terms of drying, you can do, you do whatever works for you. You can dry them in the oven, you can stack a few up and dry them that way. It doesn't have to be single sheets. I prefer to do it this way because then my papers look nice and flat when they're dried. I don't like to iron them. All right, and now what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of this blue, not all of the papers, but just some. Maybe just here and there so this is quite a dark solution I probably put too many party streamers in there but I am really interested to see how this is gonna look when it's dried kind of like a little bit of a marbling effect isn't it you can do that be careful of the surroundings you don't want to paint your house blue but I like to do this sort of stuff and experiment and, and see what's gonna happen and of course, like I said, I'm not going to do this on all of the papers, just some of them. So now I'm going to complete this whole process, wait for everything to dry, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the final result. Okay, so now is two days later and I have used up every last drop of my solution. And I'll just show you my final results. These are just the plain papers that I have. I didn't add any of that blue stuff. Quite rich color. Over here I have dyed some fabric. I even I actually like this side better than this side. So it was it just depends on what side it was drying. It was drying this way up, so then the bottom side is not as dark. And just for contrast, this was my hu my husband's uh, old shirt. And I just cut it up and dyed it with some avocado skins. Okay, this here look I just I can't even look at this. Look at how perfect these impressions are. Look at this. Amazing. All right. So I do discuss in uh, quite a bit of detail how I achieved this look in my tea dyeing video. So have a look at that if you haven't. But just quickly, I'll show you now. Basically, I use this plastic table runner that I got at a $2 shop. And I lay it over the top of my very wet paper. And one trick is the faster it dries, the better the impression. I was lucky yesterday because we had a hot day so I laid this outside in the sun also of course this helps keep it in place and that's how I got these beautiful impressions this one here is watercolor paper and I did it exactly the same way I took it out of my solution and then added my blue party streamer solution and dried it outside and this is how it dried so having a little bit of texture to start off with I don't know if you can see that this paper is textured because it's a watercolor paper. So that always produces a beautiful result. And this dried outside. So each batch that you do is going to look different because there's all these variables such as how quickly it dries, where it dries, is it outside, is it inside, or humidity levels in, in the air, all that sort of stuff, right? And then also, of course, not to mention your solution as well, how long it was boiling for, how long it was simmering for, all that kind of stuff. And of course, different materials dye differently as well. Like for example, this fabric, I just put it into a solution and straight out of the solution and it's produced this really dark color, whereas the paper needs to stay in the solution for a little bit longer. And also different papers, different results. This is just some index cards and it's quite smooth. So you can see the difference. I did the exact same thing and they were drying next to each other, yet they produced vastly different results. Look at this. And I also wanted to show you this, the difference between these two. Again, I've done the same thing, same material, same solution. But this one, I had more water that's pulled on this one section. And then that's how it looks. Perhaps the paper was drying. Perhaps sitting up 
like this a little bit and everything kind of moved down you know this these are the kinds of things the kinds of variations you can expect and they all look just so beautiful these were also completely white like this and they take the color very quickly it was in and out of the solution done and also once my papers are dry I lay them under something heavy and they look quite flat like this. I don't iron my papers. Now these ones here I'm really excited about. These are the ones with the blue. Look at these effects. Stunning results. Some may be a little bit more pronounced like that one there and some may be a little bit more subtle like these ones. Look at this one. I really love these variations in a paper and I think they are going to look wonderful in a journal. These ones here have some lines you can see and I will insert a photo here so you can see how I achieve these lines. Basically I just dried it on a rack from my oven and now I have some lines. So we can do lots of experimenting for example this one here I added the blue a little bit of blue and then I sprinkled it with salt. I'm not sure how I feel about this but it has that kind of effect on paper kind of looks like the galaxy or something I don't know this is the yellow one you can see it's completely lost the yellow these two were the yellow ones and at the back you can see a little bit of yellow coming through so this is the same paper the only difference is they were drying this way and then the underneath looks like this same thing with these flowers they were drying up this way and you can see the bottom is quite a bit whiter these were the maps I popped in there and the large sheets of paper you can see these are perfect for larger journals, so you can have some large sheets in there. And then this, these are the smaller graph paper ones. They really take the color quite a bit. I really could have just popped this in, taken it out straight away rather than leave it to soak. I think the thinner the paper, and it really depends on the fabric or the material, I should say, on how quickly it soaks up the color. Another thing that I wanted to mention that I've noticed is that my solution on day two, so the day after I made the solution, it became very concentrated and dark. So the more the solution was being used and the less of the solution in my pot, the more red and deep and concentrated it became. I will insert photo here so you can see. And then what I did at this point is I added more boiling water to that solution to soften it up a little bit and that's when I started dyeing these guys just because I found the solution to be very 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 dark so one don't be afraid to add more water when you notice that the solution is really quite dark and you're running out and two you can also reheat the solution which is what I kind of did by adding the boiling water to make it penetrate the paper quicker I guess I feel like my very first papers that go into a solution turn out the darkest and I think that's because the solution is really really hot and perhaps it grabs onto all of those paper fibers quicker I'm not sure that's just my hypothesis the main point is experiment have fun use all sorts of different materials see how it's looking and then you have your own beautiful array of different colors and materials and papers that you can play around with using your journals in your ephemera making etc and if you have a really good one like this one here that's my favorite and these ones here of course you can scan them and just keep reusing them that way i'm not going to do that i don't have a printer but it's one thing that you can do and as i always like to say in my videos i hope you feel inspired i hope you learned something new i hope you had some little flash bulb moments of ideas and i hope you're looking forward to some avocado dyeing thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye